everyone. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I was supposed to be here today in the capacity of uh, providing you with a presentation on sales and value proposition, uh, talking about how you can create value for your clients. Uh, things have changed in our economy, in our nation, and in the world this last two weeks more rapidly than we've seen in a long, long time. Uh, thus, my presentation today takes a very different slant towards risk management, most notably with respect to COVID-19, aka coronavirus. Um, I'm not going to preach from here with avenues of paranoia and fear, but I want to provide you with good information. I need to start by just reminding you all that I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a clinical expert, and any information that I provide you around those hygienic practices for your businesses comes from the health department and from the World Health Organization. So I'm simply, in that respect, passing all their information to you to keep you as informed as we can be. Um, beyond that, I want to talk about risk management as a science, which hasn't changed in the face of COVID-19. Uh, it's being used effectively in a number of fronts, including business, to manage what is quite a big threat at the moment. Uh, but I think we can see it through as an economy, as, as a nation. I think this is actually going to spell opportunities for growth for some businesses if they treat it correctly. And I think mindset is going to be one of the most important <coughs> things going into the next week, month, three months as we tackle this issue. Um, just quickly, I'm, I think a lot of people in the room already know me, but for those that don't, I'm the Senior Management Consultant Economist for Jowie Management Consultancy here in Adelaide. Um, I'm an MBA grad for the London School of Business and Finance, and I major in management consulting and risk in particular. Uh, I have postgraduate studies in economics with Oxford University, and those are continuing right now. And funnily enough, what we're talking about centres entirely on coronavirus, and we're watching the um, the applied science, if you like, actually happening in real time in, in nations as we speak. It's probably the most interesting time to be discussing these things at an academic level. Um, I'm a professional member of the Institute of Management Consultants, um, and I also author a number of uh, articles, and I want to talk about one that was published two days ago. Um, I published an article in Business Acumen magazine, and I'm happy to send the link through to everyone here. It drew a lot of attention. Um, quite a number of readers and traffic to the site for this article um, around the economic impacts. Um, obviously, they're quite a provocative picture um, as to what's happening in our stock markets um, with the value of certain firms and even entire industries. Um, let's get into how to manage it though, because we can talk about the negative side effects of coronavirus, COVID-19 all day long, and you've probably heard them. It's in the media 24 seven at the moment. So I wanna talk about what you can do as a business to work against this risk. Number one is your communications. And if you haven't already, it's time to show an outward display of commitment to health and safety for your clients, as well as your external stakeholders. What does this mean? It means having good, strong conversations, honest conversations with your employees, your workers. Um, it's about balancing that with compliance with government regulation, dealing with the risk, uh, all of the things that we need to do to stay off, but also a, a measure of gust and, and bravery, um, that the business is determined to see through this time, that the business uh, is going to look after its members and in turn ask for employees to step up. It's okay in these times to ask your workforce to step up and provide more because it's about working together and working with each other. Um, on top of that communication, making it official, the email that goes out to employees um, needs to be very considerate. Um, your employees out there in businesses right now are fearful, particularly casuals, uh, those on commission-based pay structures. They're worried. They've got rents and mortgages to pay and we need to be mindful of that. We need to work with them. Uh, we need to provide them up-to-date information, but also lead them by the hand. Um, externally, for your clients, your suppliers, this is a good time to differentiate yourself from those that are operating with just 100% paranoia. This is a time to email your clients and say, we are continuing in earnest, but we're taking strategic measures. 
We're dealing with this issue. We're following the guidelines. The health and safety of our workers, our clients, our suppliers is of the most up, utmost paramount importance to us. But we're balancing that with determination, with strategic thinking. This is the important message that I think businesses need to communicate. If you haven't done so already, now's the time. On top of that, it can't be stressed to follow the government guidelines. Keep yourself informed as to what's going on. Um, get good, credible information. There is a lot of garbage out there. It's time to stop and think slowly. What am I watching? Am I watching too much? Because if we consume ourselves with nothing but coronavirus negative statistics, it can have a detrimental effect. It can affect your attitude. It will affect your business. What about the statistics of those that have recovered? What about the statistics of those industries that are going up? What about those days that the share market has risen strongly? Let's start talking about those in equal balance whilst working with the government, whilst following our government leaders around what we need to do collectively as a community and as a nation. Um, keep it simple and understandable when you communicate it. Again, fear is high, emotion is high, and thus intelligence is low for many in these situations. So keep it as simple, as understandable, and real as you can. Don't give in to fear and speak to your staff. When I say that, sit down and have a real honest conversation. Share some of the worries that you have as a business owner, but also share how they can help you and you can help them. Let's cover some hygiene and infection safety precautions in general. Number one, there is a 24 seven coronavirus health information line. If you don't have that phone number, I suggest you take it right now. Um, that's worth contacting for any of these issues that we're discussing. Um, we do need to uh, engage in increased use of hand sanitizer, if you can get it. Yes. Um, already today in this room, we've talked about the um, low level of stocks in that area. Um, but unfortunately, we need to use what we can uh, and, and, and make it work for our employees. We're trying to stave off uh, a hidden threat, an invisible threat, and this is one of the important measures. Um, increase social distancing, so the 1.5 metre rule that's been put into place. Uh, isolate and work from home if you can. So now's the time to think about which of your workforce can work from home. Uh, the Department of Health and Ageing recently sent a lot of their workers home who are in a prime category with uh, pre-existing conditions um, and uh, over the age of 65 in order to assist them and ensure continuity for their service because right now they're assisting uh, those that are worried about their elderly parents in homes where there's limited access uh, and they want to assist those homes so they're taking the measures. Uh, maintaining a clean and hygienic home as well as a work environment now more than ever. Um, I can't stress this enough. As I said before, listen to credible information. What is the World Health Organization saying? What is the government saying? Um, we, we live in a time with uh, fake news is rampant and uh, often there's a 24 seven delay before finding out that what you found out was, uh, was not correct. Um, unfortunately, there's already been a case of people in Victoria who are attending homes dressed in um, disease control, uh, face masks and equipment, um, offering a so-called free disinfection service for people's homes and then quite literally taking their jewellery and their valuable items. Yeah. Cross-reference it with other good information. This is a time to act sensibly, not to act with hype and haste. Don't panic and remain calm. Stay positive. This is not the biggest challenge that our country has seen. Let's be very clear on that. It may well be the biggest economic challenge that we've faced, but there are some really positive indications as to what unemployment numbers may look like. And the current projections, even adding margins, aren't as severe as some people are led to believe. Um, there will be some job losses, and there already have been. There will be some business losses, but we can fight this and we can address that proactively together. Um, risk management. This is literally risk management science 101 and there are five key parts with this. Number one, an assessment. What is the risk? I'll talk about how you determine that. The control of the risk and then reassessment because there are always risks facing us every day. 
Um, there's the review of the risk and then improve like anything in business. When we talk about risk assessment, we talk about what is the likelihood in conjunction with the consequence. So if I use a ridiculous example just to, uh, to lighten the mood, there is a risk that a media could hit this building right now. There is a likelihood of that happening. And it is so infinitesimally small that we almost discount it. But there is a likelihood of it happening. The consequence of it is enormous. It's catastrophic in the extreme. What controls would we put in place for that? Probably none, because the likelihood is, is so small. But when you combine these two factors, what level of risk does that present to you for anything, whether that's COVID-19 or otherwise, when you stop and you think clearly, what is the risk level for any risk facing my business today? These first two questions are what you must ask yourself that lead to the determination of the third question. And then how do you control or mitigate this risk? So this same risk management science is used in the building industry with men and women that are out there dealing with dust particles, um, digging, all of those things, and when they use respirator masks, when they use hard hats, when they use clothing and other personal protective equipment, they're mitigating and controlling that risk. They're bringing the likelihood and the consequence of something happening, happening under that hazard or risk down to a lower risk rating. That's what the control is designed to do. And then again, we ask ourselves now, in the face of those controls, what is the likelihood and what is the consequence? Is the level of risk reduced? So if we go back to COVID-19, when we implement social distancing, when we get as many people working from home as can be, when we implement increased hygiene, when we engage in all of these control measures, is the risk reduced? And the answer is yes. If we implement these things, the risk rating is reduced. Can we make it go away? No. But we'll talk about that fact uh, and, the, and the, the fact that we can't control everything towards the end of this presentation. Um, business <coughs> continuity. These are some of the key questions that I want to put out there. Can your business work from home in parts or in isolation? Are there admin functions that can work from home? Can you simplify your business model right now? Can you cut out of your business, uh, what can you cut out in, in your business in terms of uh, items, uh, terms or activity? Is this a blessing in disguise? That's going to surprise people that that question is being asked. But this is enabling some people that are seeing a short period of growth to get down to other things, long-term implementation in their business for things that they're always putting off. Things that they've not been able to do while they're so busy every month, month to month. This has become a blessing for some of them in a way because it's forced them to stop, think, and look at the long-term objectives. Look at the long-term personal development you want to engage for yourself. Can you control the risk? Can you focus more on sales and on client relationships at this time, if you've got the time? What research and learning can you achieve? Again, not just limited to COVID-19, but what can you do for your business in terms of long-term goals? And what other goods and services can you produce? It's really exciting to hear other businesses stepping out into other areas uh, in the face of this to diversify and thinking outside the square. And I think that's gonna be one of the most important elements during this time. Important for business continuity, because we know that the government, the federal government recently released a $17.6 billion stimulus package for businesses. There is another one on the way. The states have kicked in large numbers. South Australia leading the way, I'm proud to say, with $350 million plus of stimulus, and the airline industry stimulus of approximately $750 million uh, in the works right now. With that in mind, we're waiting to see the particulars around assessments. If we stop and think we know that there will be people putting forward exaggerated uh, and exacerbated claims, um, perhaps fraudulent claims around this business continuity, so I'm advising my clients right now to record any and all perceived as well as actual business losses as a result of COVID-19 um, because it would be great to have that information and that evidence, if you like, if you are to apply for any stimulus and others may come up, it'd be great to have that information on standby for the application so that yours runs smoothly and proceeds faster. Obtain letters of confirmation from clients, not proceeding uh, with purchases, that's evidence. 
uh, already one client has gathered a, a couple of client emails and correspondence that have indicated, yes, we would have proceeded with the purchase and investment of this, but we are holding off because of COVID-19. That demonstrates evidence of business loss at this time. Um, make written plans and share them with your team. Again, open communication is so important now more than ever. It's okay to share some vulnerabilities with your team. Ask them for their advice. You might be surprised what they may share with you or what ideas they may have waiting for you to ask. Develop a formal integrated management system. Um, develop based on risk-based thinking. This is important to have this in place. And get external advice from multiple sources, not just health organisations, but legal advice, strategic advice, uh, human resource advice. And I think you had a question. I, another question, a comment on that mm. top line. Mm. Not just losses, but costs. Yeah. Because of some things we're doing, mm. uh, putting in remotes and stuff like that, it's already cost my business. So I'm saying correct. Just, just the next one. Yeah, correct. So record it all. Uh, it's going to take you time if you record this properly, but I think it's going to be worth it for businesses uh, to engage in business continuity stimulus packages when they apply to have this information at the ready. Um, what can you do? This is a time to focus on what you can control, not what you can't control. I can't stress this enough. Put in the risk control measures. Put in your strategies. Put in your energy. Put everything into your business now more than ever. Make outward declarations that your business is in defiance of COVID-19, but balanced with good control measurements and working uh, with the advice that our health department and our government has given. And most importantly, and this is, uh, this is key, is to remember that when emotions are high, intelligence can fall. And it's always important to remember that fear always gives way to three things, whether it's COVID-19 or otherwise. And those three things are knowledge, bravery, and hope. Thank you for having me today, everyone.